Hello. Welcome to another edition of Bards in the Basement. Um, today we will be reading Golden Retrievals by Mark Doty. Uh, Mark Doty is a contemporary American poet. I actually came across Mark Doty's poetry when I was um, doing some um, research, just some reading um, about how poetry appears in our daily lives, how people employ poetry um, in the modern world. Typically we think of poetry as part of our, our English class that we need to study for a few weeks before we move on to uh, another genre of, of literature. Hopefully we think about it as the most exciting part of our, our English classes, um, but um, I'm not sure. Uh, all right. Um, but I found Doty's poetry in essays and articles um, um, from um, the medical world. Um, the Journal of American Medicine had an essay about how Doty's poetry, um, and Doty has actually done some workshops with um, um, doctors and training, um, as well as um, patients. Um, so um, poetry used as part of patient care, part of the recovery process, and poetry being used um, to help create greater empathy on the, the part of the doctors and physicians that uh, are working in um, hospitals. Um, so that's how I came across um, Mr. Doty's poetry. Um, uh, once again, you'll see on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see the, the poem. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some of the literary devices that I will be discussing. I've mentioned some of these devices in some of the other um, um, recordings. Um, and so sorry if you find it repetitive, but if you keep hearing these words over and over again, um, they'll become part of your, your natural vocabulary, if you will. Um, with that said, let's hear the poem and then we'll walk through the poem and see what um, the poet is trying to um, accomplish here. Golden Retrievals by Mark Doty. Fetch! Balls and sticks capture my attention seconds at a time. Catch! I don't think so. Bunny, tumbling leaf, a squirrel who's, oh joy, actually scared. Sniff the wind, then I'm off again. Muck, pond, ditch, residue of any thrillingly dead thing. And you? Either you're sunk in the past, half our walk, thinking of what you never can bring back. Or else you're off in some fog concerning tomorrow? Is that what you call it? My work, to unsnare time's warp, and woof, retrieving my haze-headed friend, you. This shining bark, a Zen master's bronzy gong cause you here entirely. Now, bow wow, bow wow, bow wow. All right, wonderful poem, a wonderful poem. Um, those of you that are, are familiar with the movie Up, you might be thinking of uh, of the the the, the dog um, squirrel. Um, constantly, um, his, his attention is drawn um, elsewhere. Um, but um, we'll talk about that as we go through. Um, each of the each of the, the quatrains in the in the poem. Now you you notice the literary terms. It says um, sonnet, um, and the typical sonnet is uh, what you think of the Shakespearean sonnet um, that has that very formal iambic pentameter. Um, it has very formal rhyme scheme, um, and and here Doty decides to write in the sonnet form, but breaks the rules of the sonnet or or upsets our expectations of the sonnet. So instead of we do have the as I said the fourteen lines. Uh, but we don't have the alternating rhyme scheme that we're familiar with um, in the English sonnet or the Shakespearean sonnet. Um, so we have a variation instead of having A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, the couplet, typically the, 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 the closer, the, 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 the truth of the poem, if you will. Um, we don't have that. We have, we have Doty doing A, B, B, A, C, C, D, D, E, F, E, F, G H. So he breaks the traditional um, um, sonnet um, rhyme scheme. Um, so it's really not a, 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 a Shakespearean sonnet, sonnet in, in, in that sense, um, but the Shakespearean sonnet still gives shape and form to it. Um, also, you, you look at the, it does follow that, that the quatrains, it has three quatrains and a couplet. Um, so um, Doty actually broke it down into these sections, um, so we would notice the, the structure. So the, the, the poet wants us to see the structure, wants us to, to see that he's working with this formal structure, but doing something different with it. Um, and and the, the, the rhyme scheme, as I pointed out, that I have it labeled for you, but I also want you to look on the right-hand side and see the word slant rhyme. Um, and it's referred to a type of rhyme in which two words located at the end of the line of poetry themselves end in similar, but not identical. 
consonant, um, consonant sounds. Um, some types of slant rhyme are called assonance, um, similar so um, vowel sounds, um, and some are called consonants, um, similar consonant sounds. Um, so we see that in, in, in stanza two, or quatrain two, walk and back. Um, we have that those K sounds there. Um, we don't have we don't have an exact rhyme. We don't have an exact rhyme in uh, quatrain number three. Work and bark. Um, it's sometimes calling, it's saying it got the rhyme slightly wrong, missed it by oh, just a little bit there. So um, it's not it's not an exact rhyme, but it's a slant rhyme. And and the slant rhyme um, once uh, 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 one thing it does it provides a, 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 a more subtle musicality. Um, it does create uh, it does create a more subtle. Um, 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 movement or cadence to the to the the, the poem. Um, actually, it's it's not uncommon to see um, the use of slant rhymes in 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 hip hop or rap music. I think um, Lil Nas has a, a song in which he 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 rhymes um, dangerous with hostage. Um, it has similar sounds but not exact. And then the the use of assonance is 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 quite evident in. Um, um, Eminem's rap. So um, it is something that is employed by a lot of contemporary rap artists, um, the slant rhymes. Um, it gives it a little bit more um, 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 choices in, in words, um, and also it, it, it does give it, as I said, a subtle musicality or musicality to the, to the, to the poem itself. All right, so we have the slant rhymes. Um, something that's really important here uh, is to, to note the speaker. Um, as it says on the right-hand side, the speaker is the voice of the poem. Oftentimes, the speaker is the poet. But we don't always want to think of the speaker of the poem um, as the poet. Um, because the speaker um, is allowed to, uh, the poet is allowed to assume different personas by coming up with different speakers. Um, for example, John Donn um, has written some poems from the female point of view, Emily Dickinson from the male point of view. Here we have Mark Doty um, giving voice to a dog. The speaker of this poem is the dog. Um, and so right underneath that speaker, I also have stream of consciousness. Um, the speaker of the poem um, is the dog. The, the voice we hear is the dog's voice. Um, of course, we see that in the, the use of onomatopoeia at the very last line, the bow wow, bow wow, bow wow. Um, but uh, the stream of consciousness that we're allowed access into, into the dog's mind and how the dog thinks and how the dog reacts. Um, and, 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 and we see that with the bunny tumbling leaf, the third line of the poem, a squirrel who's actually, oh joy, who's actually um, scared of the dog. So we have that stream of consciousness where the, the poet allows us access to the, 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 the thoughts of, of the, of the speaker. Um, um, so stream of consciousness, is, it's a, it's a, a literary device that was, um, employed by early modernists such as um, Dorothy Richardson, James, James Joyce, uh, William Faulkner, Virginia Woolf, um, and that's the recreation of a, a character's thoughts, um, um, typically without punctuation because we don't think in, in, in question marks and commas and periods. Um, so it's a, it's a nice literary device that gives us greater access to the, um, the inner workings of a character. So enough about stream of consciousness. Um, but I'm going to now go through the, the poem stanza by stanza with you, or quatrain by quatrain, leading to the couplet at the end. Fetch. All right, nice. We have, we have the, the, the question mark. Fetch. Balls and sticks capture my attention. Seconds at a time. Catch. I don't think so. What? Uh, so now that, 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 that's, that's we get the my the I don't think so. We now know where uh, the speaker of the poem is the dog, and 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 uh, what what they're supposed to love fetching and catching and and doing these things. Now it's it's fun that it's a uh, Dodie's having some fun here with uh, retrievals, golden retrievals, um, and and you, you play throw the stick and the dog retrieves it and brings it back. Um, and he's playing with the, 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 the of course golden retriever, the dog. Um, and so we have the the dog. Uh, like I'm not gonna go fetch that 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 stick. Catch? I don't think so. I'm not gonna do that because there's something more exciting here. Bunny, tumbling leaf, squirrel, who's oh joy, actually scared. Um, so we have the, the we're in the inside the dog's thoughts, and he's very excited about everything, 
he is experiencing at this moment. Very, very much like, ah, look at this. There's, uh, there's a bunny. I'm gonna do that. Oh no, no, tumbling leaf. Oh no, and there's a squirrel. Oh wow. This is, this is, this is a kind of a joyfulness and an energy with the, the dog, uh, the golden retriever. Um, and, and nice use of, uh, enjambment. Um, we, we look at the, the, the bunny tumbling leaf, a squirrel who's, oh joy, actually scared. There's no punctuation after the, after the O, oh, so we drop down to that line a little bit quicker. Um, so it actually captures the, the, the energy of the dog, if you will. Um, actually scared. The dog's like, oh, there's a squirrel that's scared of me. That's a surprise. Um, sniff the wind. Then I'm off again. Once again, nice use of enjambment. No punctuation after the word then. Um, and we drop right down to the next stanza. We move a little bit quicker. I'm off again. And this keeping the, the, the kind of the, the pacing of it. Muck, pond, ditch, residue, any of any thrillingly dead thing. Notice the, the, the periods um, um, in in line two, um, line four, line six, um, uh, that come in the middle of the line. Um, the period in the middle of the line there helps with the enjambment, um, helps with the movement of the pace. We don't want to pause at the end. We want to keep moving, moving, moving. So we might have the, the writer um, not end um, at the, the end of the line, if you will, with a period, but leave punctuation out. So we drop down and move a little bit quicker. Now, before I go to, to the Anjou, um, the first the first six lines of the poem so far um, we have we're very much in the dog's um, stream of consciousness we're very much in the dog's thoughts what what the dog is reacting to um, in this kind of very playful um, excited world that the dog inhabits bunnies leaves squirrels any thrillingly dead thing it's gonna poke its nose in there and 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 get dirty get down in the the the, the pond the ditch the residue the muck uh, very much uh, in, into the world, into the, 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 the moment in the world, okay? Um, once again, I don't want to move away from the, the pointing out the, rhyme, the, the slant rhyme scheme again. Um, attention, then. Um, we have the N sounds at the end there. We do have an exact rhyme with O and so in lines um, two and, and, and three, but we, we, we have more use of slant rhymes than regular rhymes, okay? All right. So, and then we, we, we have Anjou in line six. So I'm doing all this stuff, and what are you doing, Anjou? Either you're sunk in the past, half our walk, thinking of what you never can bring back, or else you're, you're off in some fog concerning tomorrow. Is that what you call it? So we have that. Now we have the, 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 the speaker of the poem turning to... Um, his friend, his his the the his his master, if you will. Um, but um, we'll go to that word master in the the, the couplet at the end um, and see how he he he's playing with that idea. Um, and what are you doing? You're you're sunk in the past um, for half the walk, or the other half of the walk. You're in the future. So one half of our walk, you're sunk in the past, thinking about what you never can bring back. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost a relationship. Maybe you've lost something. You can never bring it back. So maybe you're, you're just really depressed. You're sad. You're stuck there. You're sunk in the past. And, 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 and you're, 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 you're thinking of that. You're not noticing there's bunnies out here. There's a tumbling leaf out here. There's a squirrel out here. Oh, joy. Uh, you're not you're not down in the muck in the pond. You're lost in your thoughts thinking about something you could never bring back. Or else, so that's half the walk. Nice stanza, the next stanza, the third quatrain starts with or. Or else you're, you're off in some fog concerning, nice dash, uh, an extended pause here, concerning tomorrow. Like the, the, the speaker, the golden retriever is coming up. What's the word you use, tomorrow? Because it's, an un, it's, a, it's a, a word that the, the, the speaker of the poem doesn't worry about. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not stuck in the past. I'm right here, and I'm having fun in this world right now. And so this, the, the, the speaker of the poem is looking at the, the human walking, um, not noticing anything about what's going on at this moment. They're, they're, they're sunk in the past, or they're in the, the future worried about tomorrow. And so now we go to that, that, that my work colon. Um, so um, line 10, my work colon. 
the colon is the equal sign, if you will, in, 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 in punctuation. This is what my work equals. To unsnare times warp. Uh, to the times warp is that 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 kind of stuck in the past or in the future worrying, um, and uh, I'm 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 I need to unsnare times warp. Um, you've been snared in times past or snared in times future, and woof, boom, um, bring you, retrieve you, retrieving you to this moment. I need you to get. I need to bring you out of times past or out of uh, the, the future fog um, and retrieve you. Golden retrievals, retrieving my haze-headed friend, you. And and we think of the the dog as human's best friend. Um, and, and and now we have the dog saying, "You're my haze-headed friend. You're lost in a haze." You're always lost in a haze. Maybe you're lost in the sadness of something you brought that you lost and you can't bring back. Um, uh, maybe you, 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 you've had someone that you care about pass away. Um, and, and the goat retriever is, is it finds anything dead thrilling. Um, not that, that, that that's what the dog wants to do to be thrilled about finding uh, something dead. Um, but there's a, there's a, there's this little playfulness there. Uh, you, you may have lost something. Um, but don't be stuck there. Don't be stuck there. I'm here to unsnare that time, retrieve you from that time, to remember, to get you to remember that there is something for you here, my haze-headed friend. And, 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 and don't go into the future where you can find something else to worry about, my haze-headed friend. This shining bark, a Zen master bronzy gone, gong. So we think of the bung, bung, of the Zen master, bringing us to the moment, hearing that sound. And so here we have the, the Zen mas master, bronzy gong. I like bronzy. It reminds me of golden, reminds me of golden retriever. Um, and the dog's bark, the woof, is that gong that calls you here. Um, so I'm in the couplet now. A Zen master's bronzy gong, the woof, the, the bow wow, calls you here cause the haze headed friend here not um, stuck in the past not worried about the future but here notice the comma after the word here and then entirely comma here um, entirely at that moment so that word entirely is set off by two commas you're there entirely in the now entirely now Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, and that's the the that's the 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 um, um, bronzy gong. That's the bark of the dog. That's the 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 bark of the the dog is the speaker uh, um, is the Zen master. That that's calling you, human being, here, my haze-headed friend. I need you to be here in this world. I need you to 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 possibly recognize the the bunnies, the tumbling leaves. I need you to be in and of this world, in the muck, in the pond, in the ditch. Um, find the world thrilling. I, I I need you not to be worried about tomorrow. I need you here, and you need to be here. This shining bar cause you here. So the truth of the poem, if you will, if you go back to like the idea of the couplet is the truth of the poem, the, the, the bark of the dog cause you here to live in this moment, to be a part of this world. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow. Now, um, it's a, it's a, a, a wonderful uh, sonnet um, that plays on some of the traditional um, structures of the sonnet. It doesn't have that iambic pentameter that, that we see in Shakespeare's sonnets. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? that lilting sound to it. Um, there isn't any set meter. Um, meter is, is mixed throughout. Um, but each line is, is, is 10 syllables, is 10 syllables. Um, so we have um, um, a nod to tradition. We have a nod to structure um, um, in, 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 the, in, in the poem. Um, but at the same time, the iambic pentameter and the strict rhyme scheme might be too limiting to this Zen master who needs its freedom. Um, the Zen master who can't be controlled by that 14 line, 10 syllable strict rhyme scheme because he's totally like not into that. 
he's into this kind of like, hey, let's have some fun. Let's let's look at the world around us. Um, so um, we have a nice play with the the, the st structure um, and um, uh, um, some playfulness within that structure is what I meant to say. All right. So it's a it's a it's a nice uh, nice contemporary um, poem. It it works well um, if you. Um, have a chance to pull up the sonnet 29 by Shakespeare. You'll see a, a, a traditional sonnet. You can compare these side by side and see how um, Mr. Doty decides to play with that structure um, um, and um, manipulate it for thematic reasons, um, if you will. That thematic reason, once again, that this, this golden retriever um, cannot be limited to the strict sonnet form. All right. Well, I hope you um, enjoyed this walkthrough and um, investigate some more poems by uh, Mark Doty. And I will um, talk to you again.